Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following week. My name is Colton Brown and joining me is Andrew Meadows. Hello. Hello to you, sir. Uh, Joining us as well is uh, Henrique Jamie. Uh, He will be with us uh, in in just a little while. Uh, Daredevil Season 3. We are finally talking about it. And uh, it'll be the nice kind of conclusion to uh, our conversation that we've had on, uh, well, all of Marvel and Netflix for 2018. Uh, we talked about Luke Cage. We talked about Iron Fist. And now we're potentially saving the best for last. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to get into it. But um, I did want to just say a quick reminder that, um, a- as I mentioned kind of in the beginning of the last episode, um, our conversation... Uh, about all three of these shows is actually being recorded all at once. So um, for the sake of digestibility, uh, it's it's kind of a split release. So it's kind of a part one, part two type scenario. So uh, hopefully things uh, work out well in the editing room uh, af- after uh, we're, we're done with the whole recording bit of this. Um, hoping that it'll be as seamless as possible and uh, should make for a couple of uh, very good episodes. Um we don't really need to get into news. We covered news last episode, and Andrew's fun fact um, actually talked about Daredevil a little bit already. <laughs> this so, is the only one that's not canceled <laughs> so far. Yeah, on wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, that's it's it's true. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna use that as our fun fact for this episode again. Uh, you know, we're going back to the well, um, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna jump right into the we're gonna jump right into our coverage right now. So Marvel's Daredevil season three, uh, showrunner on this is Eric Olson. It's the third showrunner in three seasons for Daredevil. Uh, usually not a good sign of things, but uh, again, I don't know. I mean, who's to say? We'll get into it. Uh, it stars. Charlie Cox, Deborah Ann Wool, Eldon Henson, Joanne Whaley, Jay Ali, Wilson Bethel, Stephen Ryder, and Vincent D'Onofrio. When Wilson Fisk is released from prison, Matt Murdock must choose whether to remain hidden from the world or become Daredevil once again. Oh. Marvel's Daredevil Season 3. I'm going to start because I would like to make a bold proclamation Right now, I am laying down the law. Let's hear it. This is the best season that Marvel and Netflix have produced, bar none. Is that a hot take? Agree? Uh, Disagree? uh, I agree. Agree. Not around around my corner. Yeah. This is streets ahead of anything else they've done. And I am a big fan of most of the work that they've done. But this, to me, is just like, goddamn, this is everything that I wanted and more. And... It's 13 episodes. It's just like, oh God, it's got the dreaded 13 episodes. Not a problem. Going back to the well, bringing back villains they've already done. Not a problem. Like, holy shit. Like, they just absolutely just nailed everything here. Everything in this show just clicks. Everything. And it's real good. I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to it. You know, the trailers were good. Um, but I guess I just, I don't know that I, I guess I just wasn't ready um, because this was. I don't know, man. It was it was something else. Like this, I I, I don't. I mean, again, I you know I, I think to this point, I've I've kind of put Daredevil season two as my favorite of the bunch, with kind of the highest highs and some lower lows in season one and all. But this is like, I think I think this. I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I there is maybe some recency bias trickling in, but I I, I again think that this is even th- this has the highest highs. And I don't think it ever, I don't think it ever goes anywhere close to the lows. <laughs> like I don't think there's lows in this show for me. Like in this particular season, I should say. Like I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? So I've, I don't think I've ever up until this point binged an entire show, like at least of this length, you know, um, in one weekend until this. And granted, like, um, I had more time now than I, I did, you know, before, but I couldn't stop watching the show. I just, like, wanted to see every episode. Like, it was either a cliffhanger or it was, there was just so much going on. There was so much action and um, just, like, 
you know, plot development that I had to see every single episode. And I was going to stretch it out to two weeks or like two weekends. And I finished it in one weekend. It was that captivating. And I thought it hit everything out of the park. The hero, the villains, uh, the supporting characters, new characters. Uh, I legitimately was interested in everyone in this show and every side plot and main plot. I, I'm all on board with this. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm on that train, too, guys. Um, in case there was any question about it. Uh, it's really fucking good. I watched this in, I think, similar fashion. I think I, I, I watched it very quickly. Um, and it's, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think that I kind of forgot how good Daredevil, because I, I think that Daredevil's always been, I think, I think my favorite show, I think. Yeah. On the Netflix. I, I, yeah, me too. Um, and, and we haven't had a Daredevil show in what, two years? We haven't had a season in two years, I think. Not a proper one. Yeah. I mean, Defenders was in. Yeah, he was, he was present. Kind of like a Daredevil 2.5, but yeah, this is, you know, all sporting characters get, you know, their, their, their due love and all that. So yeah, it's been, it's been a few years, a couple of years at least. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you kind of, you kind of, I don't know. I kind of just. I didn't forget how good it was because I always thought it was good, but um, I think it came back with a with a vengeance, man. It's. it's I think I think that part of that is you know we had all of the defenders basically get their own new season this this year, and I've liked all of them, but I think that this show is just so far and above. It's it's head and shoulders above anything that else that, that that came out this year as far as Marvel and Netflix that it puts those back into focus of just like oh well, like I had fun with Danny Rand but holy fuck this is what a good show is like I, <laughs> right. I'm like yeah like this is super refreshing from the sense of like holy fuck like you can make these shows and they're actually like legitimately fucking excellent like shit why don't they do this all the time what's going on here you know like I think I think maybe that's kind of what that feeling is maybe. Yeah, maybe the uh, maybe the people who pay for these shows, maybe they thought the same thing. You know, they come to them with the uh, with season with 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 uh, with Luke Cage, and they come to them with Danny Rand. They watch and like, yeah, okay. And then season three of Daredevil comes out. Uh, yeah, we're canceling the other stuff. Fuck that. <laughs> no. You know, I uh, the cinematography. Uh, we I, I'll start there. Holy yes. shit! Yes. Holy shit! So good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh the, praise uh, be praise be yeah it's oh it's incredible it's it's really fucking good um and i think there's one like one scene or one one episode in particular it just it doesn't end am i am i wrong am i am i recalling the that correctly one, the, the one take you mean yes there's the a, mother yeah. of all one takes the mother of one yeah. yes it it just does not stop um it, ridiculous ridiculously well shot show and and according to the filmmakers it was a legitimate one take and not a it wasn't know, uh, a not a fake together. one take where they you know they kind of stitch it together in a way that makes it look seamless like they said that they spent a whole fucking day just rehearsing for this one particular sequence and they well they nailed they it pulled it off they, they it. pulled it off yeah they got it um yeah so that was really fucking cool um also just the 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 edge of the characters right like they all everyone's so fucking edgy and and just uh it's just so it just feels so raw all the characters feel that way um and and it's brutal um but not like i mean it's really brutal but it's not like i don't even think it's ever as graphic as season one is yeah, not not not. Not really. No, it's not. No, season season one got very graphic. Like there's violence and people getting beat to a pulp and all that good stuff that that you know we expect out of Daredevil, but it's never quite. I don't think to the level of card or decapitations or anything like that. But it's still, it doesn't feel like they held anything back. At the same time, oh, no. it's not like it's like a, oh we gotta go back to like a PG thirteen. It's like no, it's just everything just feels natural to to the story that it's trying to tell. And I thought it told the, I thought it told that story very effectively. Like they use um, 
there's a lot of I don't I don't know I, I'm kind of tiptoeing because I don't want to get too into spoiler territory, but I think that they use a lot of really interesting um, um, story beats and uh, and a lot of interesting ways to kind of show the inner dialogue of people. Um, yes, yeah, that's yeah, no, I, I think you're you're on the right track there. I agree. Uh, and it's it's just really effective. Um, you know, because sometimes you, you you sometimes I think shows are guilty of maybe maybe throwing a scapegoat character there where you have to you know where you have to have just long bits of dialogue to try to explain inner conflicts and whatnot. Uh, sometimes you can do it by by you know facial expressions and this and that, and you can, can kind of infer on what's going on. But this really spells it out in a really interesting way that I don't think I've seen before. Um, not, 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 I mean, not recently anyways, like I said, I can't recall if I've ever seen it before, but, um, yeah, that was a really excellent show. Really excellent, man. Agreed. I agree. It had the three C's and we've, we've kind of touched on them already, but, um, I don't know if the three C's is an actual thing, but I wrote it as, as this way. So I'm going to put it that way. Characters, cinematography, and choreography, just absolutely phenomenal. I think the characters is the, the big one for me and we've somewhat talked about it it's not just matt murdoch it's everyone in this show villains in particular too are just really really impressive really really phenomenally written really yeah. really impressively depicted uh cinematography you know we talked about it definitely the one take and that that ties into choreography but like this I got, like I, I thought, and I thought Iron Fist season two was improved in terms of choreography. Like I, I definitely think that's still true. But like, God, like this movie, this show is just in another fucking plane, isn't yeah. it? Like, the, like the it, Iron Fist it's is like CW to be the versus HBO. Show, but like the yeah, the, the fighting in this is so much better. I, I just don't get why there's such a disparity between like not just the quality of like the writing of this show, but the quality of like the technicality of this show, like it, it just, I mean, it's the same thing with Luke Cage where like the fighting was definitely better than it was in season one, but it's oh, just it's like, still, it's fucking ridiculous. I mean, I, I guess, I guess somewhat of it is to, to like point to the fact that like, it's just the type of character that Daredevil is, you know, he's kind of more of that, I guess, you know, he's got kind of got that brawler mentality, like, you know, boxer, like his dad kind of thing. But like yeah, Luke Cage is a street. F- I mean, he's just street. Yeah, I guess that, like, yeah, that's why, true. You know, I like, mean, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess, you know, Luke Cage has the ability to just flick someone in the head and they get fucking concussion. Whereas Daredevil has to legit like go toe to toe with anyone he comes to, you know, blows with. But I, I don't I, I don't know. Like, it's not like I, I just I guess I, just, I mean, obviously, each show has its own crew that works on it. But it's just like. Why don't, you, why, don't you, why don't you get this crew to work on the other shows? Like, I, I don't know. I just, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It just seems to me like like they just operate just on a, such a higher level to me. It just seems weird that for like something that's part of this big overall continuity and it's not like, I mean, you know, like, yeah, there's a different crew and cast and stuff across the board, but like the, the higher ups are all the same. It's still Jeff Lieb overseeing Marvel TV, overseeing this, you know, it's Joe Casada, and it's just like, like these guys are all the same. Like, you know, they're, they're in the same room. It's just, I, I mean, I'm not mad that this show is as good as it is. I guess I'm somewhat mad that they're capable of this type of quality. And then they can't even get in the same ballpark a lot of the time. Like, I don't think I'm overstating it. I really don't think I am. Oh, no. I think that this is just, again, this is, well, it's just slightly jumping ahead to recommendation, but this is the very yesest of very yeses that I can give for, for television personally. This, I think this season here is some of the best single season television I've seen probably ever. I mean, I know that's high praise and you know, I, that's a really high very yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a very confusing way of putting that. But I, 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 I mean, I, I think Daredevil in general, I think has definitely been my favorite of these shows. I, I know I, I agree with you there, but I think that this is still higher than, than either season of Daredevil. I mean, it's just so much more consistent. I mean, season two was definitely inconsistent. This one is like, it, it just doesn't miss a beat. It doesn't miss a beat. It just keeps, keeps going and keeps going and it just keeps you interested and, keeps you on your toes and like every every little thing that it does is magic 
you know, the police police wrote a song about it, and I think that they were talking about Marvel's Daredevil season three when they wrote it. They, they, um, knew. they predicted the fucking future, man. So, um, <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I, I mean, you guys can talk non spoilers recommendation. I know I jumped ahead a little bit, but damn, man, I'm now nah, you're good. Let me let me let me let me cop to this. I did finish this show a few hours before recording it, so I have the immediate like <laughs> high of like. Oh, that was so good. Oh, that was so, you know, like there's, there's definitely an element of that, but I, I, I feel, uh, again, you know, I feel that listening back to this episode, you know, I'm going to go edit this episode. I don't think that I'm going to like listen to myself and think like, uh, he might, he might, it might've been a little, you know, uh, hyperbolic there, buddy. You know, I, I don't, I don't really, I don't really see that, but it's, it's a very good, it's a real good show. I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, I might be on cloud nine maybe, but. It seems like you guys are digging it too. So, um, yeah, like I said, non spoilers recommendation, however you guys want to take it from here. I think we dive into the recommendation, start dissecting it a little bit. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you say, Andrew? Oh, it's a very yes. Definitely. I'm not going to go as far as to say it's the best television I've seen. I'm not that, I'm not that high of a very yes. But I will no, I didn't say, say it was the best. I said it was one of the best. There's def- a de- 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 definitely one of the best. It's definitely a very, very yeah, it's definitely a very yes television show. It's too opinion. recent for me to like firmly place it in like this this pantheon of like shows. So I think that it might stand the test of time and, and, and go up there. Like that to me would take multiple viewings to, 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 to justify that type of response, but it's it's in the conversation at least at this point in time for me. It's 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 this season is a very yes. I think if you look at it from a whole, like Daredevil as a whole, I think I think that it might I think that it might be a I think it might equate to maybe a a, a high yes. Eh, no, maybe not. Maybe no. Maybe the whole series is a fucking very yes. Yeah, I I, I would say it's a very yes, but yeah, but it's not. It's not like this. Like I said, this particular season for me is like top tier television whereas the other ones like i really really enjoy them maybe for more personal reasons than objective reasons but like i feel I like know. i feel like you could probably watch season one and then if i rem- i mean you'd have to watch the defenders in between which is kind of a letdown i guess but relatively I, speaking i'd say yeah um but if you if you didn't have to like if you could just if if you could find some way to bridge the gap, you could m- t- make season one and season two, and you would have an inc- absolutely fucking outstanding television series. Absolutely, without a doubt, really one of the best. Or just these two seasons, they're really good. Daredevil is a really fucking compelling character. Um, and and it's just, anyways, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm I'm dragging on here. <laughs> Very yes, Henry. Very yes. Um. Yeah. No. I think season one, I thought was stronger than season two, even though there were a lot of things I really enjoyed about season two, but I, I feel like I probably enjoyed them more because of kind of the, the hand and like the, the mystical nature of it, but trying to be as objective as I can. I think season one overall is a lot stronger than season two. And I thought that was going to be a high bar to break but i think this season actually did break that for me and it's been it shattered it, that ceiling for sure yeah and it's it's been a couple of weeks now for me um watching it when it came out and he, i would not mind going back and re-watching it right now because season three was so good and now i'll probably go back and you know take a little more time through it not that i feel like i skipped anything but um, I could probably pick on, pick up a few more things and I already thought season one should have gotten just like some kind of, I mean, not, I know this is not the kind of TV shows that lend themselves to, uh, awards, but I just hope that somehow season three, like makes some kind of push to get something because at least for the performances, because while they were all really strong, I mean, Vincent D'Onofrio was just an amazing kingpin. Like he he's easily one of my top Marvel villains, um, which recently we've had some very good ones. Um, and just like in the movies and television, like 
the kingpin this season one was kind of the like the the origin story of the kingpin this is like him as the kingpin for all 13 episodes and you see why he's so powerful and it's an incredible character and incredible performance um by him specifically but you know just by the entire cast it's really good it's really good yeah yeah you're you're on the money with with pretty much everything you said there. Nope, with everything you said, and I, I added the caveat there, and that that was not needed. Uh, <laughs> let's get into spoilers because we've got lots to talk yeah. about. Full spoilers for Marvel's Daredevil season three. <laughs> Fucking bullseye, man! Can we talk about bullseye? Let's. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, we would probably talk about any of the characters here, but yeah, uh, Special Agent Benjamin Poindexter. Wow. What a creepy wow. fucking dude. He's just, oh, yeah. Who knew that fucking Wilson Bethel had that in him? I think Andrew and I joked about his, his filmography when we talked about um, him being rumored to play Daredevil. Or I'm um, not Daredevil. Well, he did play Daredevil, to be fair. <laughs> but when he was rumored to play uh, Bullseye a while back, this was a guy that was just like, oh, he was on Heart of Dixie or some shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, and just favorite show. Yeah. Andrew's favorite right. show, correct. <laughs> you know, and it was just, where, where, I mean, obviously they cast the guy for a reason, but holy fuck, I did not expect any of this. I, I didn't expect the level of depth that they would give to the Bullseye character. I mean, right? I think they definitely took their own spin on the character and tried to, you know, you know, give that characteristic Netflix flashback type angle to, to give some depth to the character. But, you know, I think for all intents and purposes... Bullseye is a character in the comics that's just been like a he's, fucking loose cannon. He's just a crazy with, like, man. And he was kind of like he's kind of like a Joker esque type character where his his background isn't that relevant. Like it doesn't matter too much. And this one definitely, I think, spent a lot of time like showing you why he is the way he is. I mean, there's still kind of that. I think there's still a comic booky element to him in the way that he can just like kind of almost supernaturally use everything as a projectile. And I. Weirdly enough, it didn't feel like super comic booky in the moment. I didn't think. No. Like it no. just felt like fucking terrifying. Like uh, just I don't know, man. Snow globe at you. <laughs> yeah, they, they throw they throw anything at you, man. Like I don't. Oh god, man, it's so he cool. The, like, all he the sequences the fucking, they used with them. Pick the 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 uh, the things off of like when they when they were inside his house, you know, and he goes outside in the hallway and he picks the little things off of the little glass shards off of the, the fucking lamp. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, he's crazy. He throws knives up. And they, they're at the dinner party. And throws. He just loading yeah. those people just, up with fucking, fucking knives. Yeah, it's so much silverware, man. Oh, oh, you know what was really cool was when he was trying to throw the the forks and shit at uh, at Wilson Fisk, and they were bouncing off of off his, his coat. Jacket. Yeah, that yeah. was so yeah, cool. Man, little details. Yeah. There's all sorts of cool shit. You know, thank what Melon I, for that. I didn't know about, and I'm kind of bouncing. I just get excited and I kind of rant. So you can dial me back or whatever, but um, I thought Daredevil looked like an absolute badass in his black uniform with those Muay Thai ropes. Oh yeah, with the Muay Thai. Yeah, ropes. yeah, and ah oh, man, that was that was just really cool. Yeah, I, you know, I thought. Well, I think that they well they went once they fixed the mask, um, kind of halfway through season two of Daredevil. I, I've liked the red suit, but I've always kind of thought it should be like still pushed more towards what the comic book version should be. I don't think it should be like total spandex like that. I think armored version definitely makes more sense like for the universe of this character. But I've been waiting for the uh you know the double D's on the chest. Uh not those double D's. Um <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Um <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I was, you know, I kind of wanted them to push more into like, because it kind of got this segmented look and there's a lot of black still to the costume. Like, I think that they should still push more to like towards like this, this kind of redder color scheme that he has in the comics. And like a true red, he's kind of got like a burgundy esh kind of color to it right now. Um, but putting that all aside, I was definitely like, that black costume is just so fucking awesome. I, I agree. Like it, it's really cool. And I thought that it was just really awesome to, to give a good story reason for why Matt has to go back to like this back to basics approach to Daredevil, yeah. you know, like it was really, really awesome. And, and, you know, and Bulls, I filled out the Daredevil costume quite, quite well. So, 
you know, it was cool to still see that costume get integrated into the storyline. And I think it actually makes an even better storyline justification for why Daredevil, should he happen to get a season four, would push more for that, you know, more comic book accurate type suit of like, well, I probably shouldn't wear the thing that this fucking dude murdered so many people in, yeah, you know, right. or maybe I should do something else now. So yeah, I, I agree. He looked badass. There was actually a look that he sported towards the end where he had kind of like a red undershirt too. He had a little, you know, like a little um, added red to the color scheme. I thought was pretty, pretty nice touch as well. It was very practical too. Like he was just, you know, doing whatever happened to be wearing um, like a black sweater or fleece or whatever. And then would just get something to throw it on as the mask. And then like, or and then later on get his ropes. Didn't he fashion the mask out of like what he found at the church? Uh, Wasn't that yeah, kind yeah, of implied? Yeah, some of that stuff. Because it has like this little white piece underneath yeah. that I don't think was present in the first season no. of, the, of, a Daredevil, of the show. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Those fights between Daredevil and Bullseye, you're both at Ooh. the uh, New York Bulletin and at the church, just terrifying. Ooh. Like, and you know, like, you know, he's not going to die now because. You know, He's Daredevil, or like at least he'd make it to episode thirteen. But yeah, I get scared. I got scared for him. I got scared for Karen, especially, um, especially the episode. Yeah, especially the, 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 the church fight the, and the in the Karen episode where it's like you're showing all her backstory and like typical man Karen. Superhe- pretty Jesus. sure, pretty sure the name of the episode was Karen. Yeah, quote unquote Karen. And like typical yeah, superhero like, trope. It's like oh, let's delve into this character's backstory so we can kill them. And it's it's oh it's it's not even it's that I mean it's literally like they put it in the comic book setting in which Karen yeah. Page did yeah. did in fact die like that was the Guardian Devil placement I mean you know they they kind of see and I think that the thing that I like about this show in particular um, this is somewhat taking a step back is that it leans into so much of those comic book elements but it it does it takes the marvel studios approach of remixing them in some ways and like here's like a really cool thing from the comics we're not going to do exactly that because then you'll see it coming but we're going to take like really strong inspiration for that like we understand that that's such a really cool thing that people want to see so we're going to do something along those lines in a way that will still satisfy people and so like this whole church fight between him and bullseye was kind of that and then, you know, leads to this moment where like, oh shit, you know, he throws, I think the Billy club and you're like, oh fuck me. Like this is, this is it. You know, this is the episode called Karen. We just spent 20 plus minutes with her, you know, backstory. And it's just like, this, this is, this is, this is it. This is the moment. This is the thing we, you know, we expect. And then they do kind of a reversal of that. And you're just like, oh fuck. Like, oh, that's, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm even more satisfied somehow. Like that they just didn't do exactly what I expected them to do it. And as a, as a side note, uh, I'd like to say special rest in peace to to Father Lantum, who has been one of the most consistently awesome characters in this show. Like, yeah, that was really sad. Yeah, you know, it's I mean, it's generally just fucked up. Like, just the whole idea of it. You know, this dude coming in and murdering a priest like that. But you know, especially for it to be this character who, you know, has been kind of this this voice of the Catholicism for Matt, and especially in this season when the Catholicism takes. I think that I think that maybe the religion aspect of this show is is really brought even more into the forefront with this show, um, both through Sister Maggie, but I think moreover just with Matt's struggle with his identity. Right. You know, this can I cross the line mentality and, you know, his his I guess initially his acceptance of this, you know, I, I have to cross the line, there's no other way. You know. I think it's really, really interesting to just see all of these elements just come together in such a meaningful, satisfying way. Like that church fight is just, you know, it's, it's Karen, it's Matt coming in, like Matt giving up an opportunity to, to kill Fisk and, you know, basically renounce kind of everything that he stood for up until this point. It's that, you know, it's bullseye just being this crazy fucking asshole that finds Kingpin as his North star. And, you know, that's, that's who he's kind of oriented around. It's father Lantum. Who's this, you know, really, really important supporting character and, you know, and then that has repercussions on everything else outside of that too. And like, man, like there's, there's not a lot of shows I think that 
can have just so much going on in one particular sequence that has just all of these threads that tie into it, threads that feed out of it, and in a way that's just really just not only satisfying to watch in the moment, but it's it's for me, it's kind of the thing of like, I talk about it now, I think about it now, and I'm like, man, like this is just such an intricately crafted television show. Like all of this is yeah. just so meticulously scripted in a way that like people here writing this show know how to tell a fucking story. They know how to spin a yarn. Like this is just really, really impressive. And you can say that I think about really any of these episodes. I mean, I think that one's a particular one that's a standout because just have, because of just, you know, you know how, how much really is going on in it. But I know, I think, again, I think you can point to any one of these episodes and like, even if in the moment you're just like, I don't really know where this is going. Like there's a payoff to every little thing that they set up that, that has some sort of meaningful, um, conclusion that, that it's building towards. It's really impressive. It's really impressive. I think that the supporting cast, they, they, they redefine what it means to be a supporting cast member. You know what I mean? Well, they're they, all as compelling as the main character, you know? Right. There, there's a lot of depth there and, and, but they, they really do. I mean, each one of his interpersonal Matt's personal relationships with each one of those characters, they all they all they all build into Matt in such a meaningful way. Um and it's I don't know, man. It's really power like when the when the when the priest died, I uh and 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 he was given his speech there at the end. I was, I was really fucking sad. <laughs> I was really sad. <laughs> um I got I got a little emotional on that spot too. Fucking I think I just might be an emotional guy. Cause this shit all sorts of shit's <laughs> been making me cry lately. I don't know what it is, but that was really fucking sad. Um and I enjoyed the um the the inner voice of Matt being Wilson Fisk. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, that was that was really well done. And I think it happened consistently through through the season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I don't think it was yeah. one. Well, and it was it wasn't just Fisk too. He talked to his dad at one he point. He did talk to his dad, yeah. right? Um it's uh it's good. It's good, really good storytelling, man. Like you said, it's really good storytelling. And there are badass things that happen, you know? Like Wilson Fisk breaking uh, breaking uh, Homeboy's back against the corner of the wall. Um, <laughs> that was, the, <laughs> yeah. that that was, was pretty brutal. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. Or Matt beating the shit and, oh, man. I mean, thematically and, and, and just in an abstract way, Matt painting that picture red. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That was. Oh man, I get a little. Actually, I get a little bit goosebumps here just thinking about it. Jesus Christ. Um. It was ah, so good. Um. And and so yeah, there's a lot of things that happen. The 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 one take, the incredible one take was amazing. Um. The like I said, the the him painting the picture red. I thought that was really poetic. I thought that was really good. Um. And but overall it's definitely a story piece and i think it's a really compelling story piece i think it's awesome um yeah so that's all that's, that's pretty much all i got i want to talk about the flashbacks i wanted to talk about that painting i wanted to talk about the one take um i did talk about the costume and the ropes um i think i'm in the karen episode the karen episode holy shit karen man well, I think I think that might be a good time to talk a little bit more about Karen Page in general because yeah. I think there's a few things with Karen this particular season that that I thought were fantastic. For some reason, I, I see online that Karen Page just gets shit on a lot as a character, and I've I've always enjoyed Karen as a character. I thought she's been pretty great, and people are like, "Oh, she doesn't have any fucking chemistry with Matt." I'm like, oh, I've never really gotten that. I mean. Matt's obviously kind of got like a weird sort of thing where like Electra is like his his shit and I you know okay, but I I, I always thought Karen was was pretty good. I mean I think probably the the one thing that I would probably like concede is that like she got like this big editorial position, kind of writing like a somewhat shitty article I think in like season two and I'm like eh whatever. But you know I kind of write that off as just TV kind of thing. But I thought that. You know, even if you felt all those things about Karen before this season, like I don't think I could look at this season and say that Karen wasn't fucking awesome in this season, like on her own, and then just like in terms of like her role and like everything, like she's great. Deborah Ann Wool is fucking awesome. Um, 
I, and I think, it, I mean, even in the beginning, like, I don't know if it's the first episode, second episode, something like that, but like we see kind of the, the there's an actual flashback to when Matt reveals that he's Daredevil to her and we see that actual conversation unfold. Like we, like that was kind of the way that season two ended and then Dare, or, um, uh, Defenders rather just kind of glossed over that a little bit. Really, really, really compelling. The backstory that we got in I think episode 10 was fucking harrowing like and there's a yeah. lot of time there's a lot of time spent on that i mean i mean do you guys do you guys have anything to say about like the the actual just that 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 particular part of that episode there it was just, i mean just it's harrowing i mean that's that's you know and there there's and i think it, i think it indicated the relationship with her dad um when he when when she had no place to go and he yeah she, you yeah, know the, the little that phone call she had was was very terse it was like, yeah kind of like what the fuck happened here like if that that's what your dad's reaction is to to you like calling crying and like hey can i come home like jesus yeah like, you some, know some and, seriously and, dark shit and, and a lot of that has been alluded to in past seasons but never quite uh fleshed out so yeah and they fucking flesh it out in this one man in a, in a big way um and it just it you know, and it just goes for like the, the 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 thematic elements that they're trying to convey, right? The just the internal struggle, not with just Karen, or not just with Matt, I mean, but with Karen, and 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 her struggling to do the right thing, and and I think they actually they they throw it out there. I think after the uh, after the um, after the funeral, you know, and how how all these different characters support each other, and and and. and it's just ah, oh, it's really fucking intricate. Like you said, it's really good, and you can sit here and you can dwell on it. And they're just everyone's so multifaceted, um, and it's uh, it's just they're, it's a, a raw, real. They feel real, pe- like real people, man. It's really fucking good. I like it. God damn, I might watch the season again. <laughs> yeah. No man, Karen, Karen was a dark character, and I like that we got her, a little more of her backstory to it and uh you know mo- moving away from her i really like the the newcomers this season we already talked about uh bullseye or poindexter and um we, we didn't talk much about um special agent uh hadim yeah special agent nadim i would like to make a deal yeah Fucking i really good. liked him and just like having yeah. him like i feel like when you sometimes you bring in a new character and you it's, it's hard to incorporate them into a story especially when there's already a lot of yeah. established characters yeah, when, going when you're, on. you know you're you're, you're you're starting your third season yeah it's kind of like eh, who the fuck's this guy what do i care yeah. about this? i don't it's care like about this guy you're showing me his family you're like oh cool whatever his family but then like then i got pretty invested in his character and i was pretty uh i was pretty upset when he died i got pretty invested in this dude's fucking magnificent hair yeah, well, right. That too. <laughs> I mean, it was impressive. No, but no, no. Seriously, though, he yeah, I agree. He was, and he's very yeah, much Wilson. Uh, he was a phenomenal character, supporting character, right? Like he, you know, I feel like a well, lot. Like he of, didn't even know. I f- yes, you know? like I feel like Wilson Fisk up until up until the induction of this guy, right? You feel like it's like a like he's a contained villain, you know, like he. He's obviously menacing. He's obviously decapitating people with car doors, um, and he knows how to manipulate. But you don't know necessarily like to know the extent of his, you know, of his or like how he does it or exactly. But with this, with with special agent Deem, you get a very personal look on how how he's a kingpin, you know, and not just with him, but with the entire bureau. It's um, it it's. Ah, it's fucking terrifying. And at that moment, um, you when you when you when you realize that the extent of the manipulation that the kingpin put in 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 not just Nadine but all the all the other agents as well, um, it's like I said, it's 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 nothing short of terrifying. Like it, holy shit, Wilson Fisk, you're a fucking mad genius. You know, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, and and it and it. And it only reinforces, I think, Matt's perspective through a lot of the show of like, how the fuck do you win? We, we can't. How do we beat this guy? Yeah, it's like you know everything you try just falls short. And even like episode twelve, like they have this like super, uh, you know, it seems like this great scheme to have uh, Nadim testify, uh, you know, have have him indicted by the grand jury, and it's just like, 
I'm like, in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, it's episode 12. What's episode 13 going to be if this works out? But like, just to see him somehow fucking finagle him out. And it's just like this very minor thing of like the jury, you know, Matt hears the jury basically, you know, kind of compromise. And it's just like, fuck, man, like Kingpin's sphere of influence is just so insane. And, 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 and I think that the, I think the thing that makes this show so good or this season I should say so good is that it sells all of that it's not that it doesn't feel like an ass pull of like oh he's the kingpin you know he can just do whatever he wants like you can see the strings being pulled like you can see him holding the strings in in some ways you know especially you know with Poindexter as he kind of gets kind of twisted up into that but you know especially with Nadim you know to bring it back to Nadim like the way that that character gets manipulated from the beginning. And even if you don't see it right at the beginning, the way you can look back and, and go kind of see the events as they unfold. And you think, Oh, this was just step one to the plan. This was step two to the plan. This was step three. And then boom, you know, he's, you know, you have him in the palm of your hand basically. And like, that's it. And it makes Fisk this methodical character, but a character that, Oh man, he definitely terrifying. Yeah, I would 100% agree with that sentiment, but it, it's like next level shit. And you know, like I said in a way that's just really earned and like that's hard I think to pull off to depict that sort of thing without it just feeling like just convenience or like like plot contrivances. Like to me it didn't feel like plot contrivances. It felt like people just being continually outplayed at every turn. You know, he's, you know, he's the uh, five steps ahead of you. You don't even know what game we're playing kind of character, um, and, which, and see, which by the way, is it, that's a, that's an arrow reference, by the way. But um, <laughs> I figured you would enjoy it's it more if I while. pointed out that it was a CW reference. But yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's interesting that you don't the the on screen performance, I think, is different than the the behind the scenes Wilson Fisk. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a very stoic. Like you don't you don't see him doing these things. He's either very stoic or he's just incredibly fucking passionate. You know what I'm saying? Um he's pissed off. But I I feel like you don't see him pulling strings on screen very often. And I think that kind of adds to it too. Uh, you do see him sitting in a chair full of cameras, you know, and dictating to people, but you don't see him. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. It's... Well, I mean, that showed enough that we know how he's doing things, but a lot of it, like you say, is it's implied. It's not. We don't have to see him being the master manipulator. It's 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 less interesting to see exactly how everything he does it, and more interesting to see him as. Um, I'm I'm being a goody two shoes. You know, I'm complying with the FBI. Like you see that angle, and then. You know, the more you go on, you see, you see the curtain slowly being kind of unveiled to, to, to you also show see you how he really who he is. Point Dexter, you know what I mean? The 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 amount of effort he went to understand the character, the that person. You know, he sits there and listens to all those things, and then he finds out how to how to how to pull the strings, like you say. You know, it's yeah, and, and I mean, so so that you know, uh, Dex has this kind of thing with Julie, and then she just gets fucking iced. Like two seconds after there's like a scene with 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 her and and, and Dex and it's just like I I saw a lot of people online like didn't even make that connection that it was her like until it was kind of just like obvious at the end when when she's dead but I I I mean I put it together but it was just like that that's just like a little thing like if you're not like totally paying attention like if you're looking at your phone in that moment like that's just a little thing that just shows you how fucking methodical like Fisk is with everything that he does like it's really really impressive and and that's there's there's little things throughout like they have the when uh what a dex goes to see fisk you kind of see the tarp that's kind of laid out like the plastic tarp yeah yeah like mm-hmm. like if that conversation went a different way then that would have led to a very different result like if if dex wasn't kind of the sociopath that that he actually was then you know there's probably a very different end result for that and obviously for kind of the rest of the events of the show to be fair but plan b like right. there's there's just little things in that like you know oh we're just redecorating or whatever like like little shit like that when they go to the when nadim goes to the fbi 
uh, chief's house or whatever her mm-hmm. position is, you know. The contractor work. Yeah, you know, like there's things like that that I think are pretty obviously inferred, but at the same time, but it's, if you're it's not Nadim, not... you're you're not if you're if you're not if you're Nadim, you don't pick no, up on right, that shit. Right. No, I, so, I mean I mean inferred to I think it's implied to an audience, um, but it's not necessarily something that like if you're not like super paying attention, then you're not gonna really give much thought to it. But I think that there's a lot of thought given to every detail of of how the story is told and that's just just one kind of cog in the machine if you will so yeah it's really cool uh i highly recommend everyone watch this show yeah uh yeah i think that's i think that's underselling it a little bit but yeah <laughs> definitely I, I was talking to um one of my friends in med school about the show who's watching it and uh this kind of just shows like the the tension they pay to detail but um you were talking about some of the uh, the scenes with like Poindexter and how he goes to his psychiatrist, and it is like so on point for um, just like how he's depicted in the show and like how he reacts and like things he would do and like why he tries to find someone like his therapist, um, and then why he attaches himself to Wilson Fisk. That it's. It just like his his whole character just makes a lot of sense uh, with his borderline and other tendencies, but it's just they just get all the characters so well, and even in the small details, they they really nail it. Yeah, yeah. There's there's, there's no doubt that there was some serious like work done by by you know everyone that 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 worked in the writers' room on this this season. Um, the uh, the confrontation between fucking Karen and Fisk. Like, yeah, that, that was to me was just very an unnerving. amazing moment and a great payoff to, to Karen kind of killing Wesley in season one. You know, that's something that has been uh, kind of glossed over a little bit, but bringing it back to the forefront. Also, to me, like, again, that, that ties back to like, this is a really great reversal of things in the comic books that happen, uh, that have happened. I think it's actually even better than the instance of what happened in the church fight because in born again, which this, this season wears the born again inspiration on its sleeve. That's very obvious. Um, especially like sister Maggie, like that's not necessarily one-to-one, but the relationship there is one-to-one. So I think that that's there, but this whole idea of Karen revealing her identity or, or rather Matt's identity to Fisk, I think is, is really well done. Like in the comics, it's like this, super over the top Frank Miller bullshit like Karen's like a fucking porn star and she's like trying to shoot up on heroin so she's like she's like, I gotta get my fix I gotta get my fix so she sells out Matt to Fisk which is like that wouldn't work for this version of Karen for many reasons that I'm not going to get into but yeah I'm very glad they did not go that direction like right. they didn't go in that direction but then they like had like you know this this angle of Karen in her past, you know, kind of being party party a little bit. We see some of that. And so, like, there's, like, that shade of that character there where, okay, you know, she, you know, she she, she used drugs in the past. You know, she drank a lot in the past. And, you know, obviously that, that had some really, really um, unfortunate circumstances that, that it ultimately led to. But it's not like that's the defining thing of Karen. Like... And that's not why she would, like, sell out Matt. Like, she doesn't intentionally sell out Matt. Like, it makes much more sense for this character to just incidentally sell out Fisk because Fisk is this master manipulator, this 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 guy that knows kind of, you know, he's almost this omniscient presence. Like, he just, you know, he's already figured out. Like, he's 90% confident that Matt Murdock is Daredevil. Karen supplies the 10% that makes him 100% confident. You know, and I think that's just a much smarter approach. It, it's much more in line with what this character has been and, and you know, what was it during the season. But it, it it all just just it's all just so cohesive, like the way that it's put together. There's, uh, everything in this, I think, is just really, 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 really cohesive, I think, is, is, is a way to put it. And, and like the integration of the new Nadim the way he ties in, the way he becomes the informant at the end, and even the resolution of a story and how that plays out and, you know, his kind of some, you know, I guess, quote unquote, sacrifice, if you look at it as that, to, to basically put Fisk behind bars, like it's all, 
it's all cohesive in how it comes together. Sister Maggie, her involvement with Matt in general, the backstory, the the reveal that she's his mom. Like I wasn't sure that they were going to go in that direction. Um, again, that's something that's pulled straight from the comics, but I just wasn't sure that they were going to quite go that way. And it's all just done so well. And it ties into that, that religious angle, her relationship with father Lantum, which we hadn't seen prior to the season. Like there's just a lot there that like a lot of this just could seem like too much, but it all just, it just, it just fits together nicely. It fits together cohesively. Like, man, like it works real good. Yeah. It's good show. Good stuff. But, uh, yeah, let me let me ask you guys, I guess, before we just move on, final thoughts on Daredevil Season 3, anything just last minute you'd like to say, or do you want to move on? We can move on, man. I think we said it. It's really fucking yeah. good. It's an incredible show. I think best season that Marvel's put out on television by far. Yeah, yeah. Or, or easily, I'd say Season 1's very strong, but this is definitely, yeah, this the, is same. definitely it's, it's, yeah, the top yeah, yeah. for me. Okay, so let me just briefly ask you guys about the future of Marvel and Netflix. Now, you know, we talked in the last episode about the Marvel, Disney streaming shows that are coming, which to this point are all based on the movie characters, and none of these characters have, have appeared in movies. You know, they didn't originate from movies and then get spun out or anything like that. Like, it's just like with the cancellation of Luke Cage, cancellation of Iron Fist the lack of a renewal so far for daredevil as of recording this i don't know man like it kind of puts me on edge and like i think that after luke cage and iron fist i would have been like i i I really wanted to see where those stories went but not in like in in a way that like i'm like beating myself up over it but i think that if we don't get a daredevil season four with this same showrunner and everyone coming back i'd be i'd be pretty fucking bummed about it personally yeah uh, all right like i think it ended in a way that like it could conceivably be good enough to stand on its own and and you know it's not it didn't i don't think it actually had aside from maybe the bullseye stuff oh yeah it can didn't we, have like this can we talk about that little uh end teaser with bullseye yeah what, what's that all about um well that was, that was probably the only thing i didn't like about this season like like very specific thing um it just like I thought it was a little too much for me, but um, uh, the zoom into the eye, the zoom into the eye, yeah. ball. I think, was, I think it's definitely cornball. The, the surgery, you know, and they didn't say it, but like it was, I guess it was, um, alluding to his um comic book story where he gets a uh, adamantium in his spine. Yeah, um, but I, I assume they're just gonna make it in a way where he would come back like physically stronger. But, um, what happens when he gets adamantium in his spine in the comic books? He just like he just has an adamantium. Yeah, spine. he just becomes like stronger and like more powerful and stuff. Okay, all right. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't need to zoom into the eye. I would have preferred <laughs> not to have it. it. It got a little too comic booky for me for a season that didn't have a lot of that. Yeah, it just felt like it. I felt like it didn't fit with the rest of the season. Yeah, but, it felt like it more would be in line with like season two's kind of like hand ninjas and all that. Yeah. I, yeah. I I think it would have been fine. Like, I don't mind the actual idea of like the, the bonding process to, to, to get bullseye up to speed to, to make him, you know, this, this foil potentially for the future, but it was, it was the actual deliberate, like zoom into the eye. And then like, you see the bullseye symbol. Uh, okay. All right. We get it. Yeah. Might as well just fucking imprint it into his forehead. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that we would ever see that in a live action medium because that's just preposterous, but <laughs> uh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, I, I said, I'm surprised you know, they didn't end up breaking the glass and having them catch the glass and throw catch, it at the same the glass, time. He just catch, you know, he, he spends out the shards with uh, the, 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 the stained glass shards. Yeah. That'd be, that'd been fucking great. Or if he's on an airplane and there's like a, like a, like an old lady yapping next to him. No, like, ah, I really like that. My, my daughter, blah, blah, blah. Please don't. And then he, <laughs> then he, and then he flicks a little peanut off the, no. You know what I'm talking about, and then and yeah, then, I know what the, you're and, talking about. The stewardess comes by, and he's like, "More peanuts, please." I wish I did. <laughs> fucking, fucking classic. You know what? I'm gonna, I might watch. I might, I might spin up uh, Daredevil 2003 pretty soon. There here. You that's, go. That sounds yeah. pretty legit. Fucking Ben Affleck, 
Uh, man Without Fear. Good stuff. The Man Without Fear. Yeah, man. I don't know. I'm pretty afraid of that movie. He's got that fucking <laughs> uh, fucking banging Rob Zombie song, Man Without Fear. and uh, That's it. It's got some fuel on there and fucking Bring Me to Life. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I man. Do, Evanescence. Yeah. Whew. Whew. Getting all excited thinking about it, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, I... I I think the I think the director's cut of that movie is not bad. It's not bad, but this is this shits all over that movie. Uh, let's let's just say in terms of interpretations of the comic book character. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I I okay. I I just think that I think there's a way to move forward with this universe that like focuses on the strengths. Like obviously, okay, Luke Cage and Iron Fist are somewhat of a dead end in terms of their own shows. And I I think Jessica Jones is heading that way after season three. I'd be shocked. If Jessica Jones gets renewed beyond a season three, especially given that the showrunner is done after that, she like signed an exclusivity deal with some other network, I think. Um, I could see them potentially folding all three characters into one, uh, Jessica Jones, Danny and uh, Luke Cage. I could definitely see those all being kind of the same character, especially if they're going to move away from Claire and Luke, like, and they wanted to lean more into Luke and Jessica being a thing. But at the same time, it's just one of the, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know that, like, I don't even know that Netflix is like, let's commit the resources to these characters and just do it in an efficient manner. Or if it's just like a, meh, we don't care. Like, especially now that Disney's like starting to do their own thing. Like that's just competition. Like, I don't know. Like, I I, I want to see more of these characters. I just, I feel like the future is pretty uncertain and that kind of, makes me sad like i think that maybe daredevil i feel like if any of these shows should be safe it should be daredevil like i would think if netflix has any stake in the game like i would think renewing daredevil would be a fucking no-brainer but i I just don't know if there's more to the story that we're just not privy to Mm -hmm. disney getting their own fucking thing i mean i i don't know i don't know it's I, i i don't know it's all speculation I just I I don't see why Disney would want to have their IPs played on a separate streaming service. You know what I mean? Seems like they would they would end up wanting to capture that back. Yeah, and and if that's as simple as it is, if it's just Disney pulling back on these characters and like, oh, we'd like to, you know, put them on our streaming service, I'd be fine with that. It's just yeah. when you when you're in this period where you don't know what it is, it's just kind of like fuck, man. Like especially coming off of Daredevil season three. Especially coming off Daredevil season three, yeah. It's like okay, the other two, like all ah, right, well, I'll live. you know, <laughs> yeah, just don't suck this one, please. Sucks, but like Daredevil season three, like I said, I would be, I'd be pretty pretty disappointed if I don't see any follow up to this in any fashion. Agreed. All right. Well, I mean, uh, any any parting words, or you guys want to move on? No man, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. That is that is a good way. You heard it here to first. To summarize it, you heard it here first. That's an also a, a a good way to to to, to put it. Um. All right. Well, let's talk about what we've been up to lately. Um. Andrew. Yeah, man. Let me kick it to you. You've Kicking it to, to me. You, you've been up to a few things since we recorded last. Surely. So what? Have you been up to? I've done a few things. Um, I watched and completed. I started and completed uh, Castlevania season two. Uh, and it was pretty stellar. Really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. Um, I think it's a really awesome video game adaptation. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. A really cool show. Uh, I also started Sabrina, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Oh, how's that? I am enjoying it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I it's not the best show in the world, um, but it's uh, it's fun. It's definitely fun, and uh, I think the characters are are well done. And um, I I got I got this thing for uh, like magic and mystical shit. It's actually inspired Satanism. me. Satanism. Just- yeah, it's pretty cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that will be mixed, but I'm going to mix it in a way that people can very obviously understand what I said. That way your response is uh, even funnier. You're welcome. Um, I did watch, uh, it inspired me to buy um, 
Oh, Constantine just came out with a new cartoon. Not Constantine. He didn't come out with a new cartoon, but he is in a new cartoon feature made film made by DC. Yeah. Uh, their animated stuff is usually pretty strong. Though. I haven't seen it yet. I think it's called City of Demons. Um, so I have yet to watch that, but I did pick it up. I also picked up Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, and uh, and that seems pretty pretty cinematic from what little bit I've played. Uh, pretty cool. Um, I feel like I've done some other things. What else did I do? Ah, shit. Um... Mm, can't think of anything else. I did give it Dave and Buster's, which is an arcade. Uh, and I th- I haven't been to an arcade like that in a long time. I got shit-faced and played some arcade games, and I had an absolute ball. I thought it was awesome. I know you've been playing a particular video game, have you not? Oh, uh, well, I did. You know, it's funny. Uh, I've been playing Into the Breach. I bought, uh, I bought Red Dead Redemption. I played it for a couple of hours. Like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, but Red Dead Redemption was like a hundred gigs, right? And it took like three hours to download. So I, um, I, I also bought Dark Souls for the Switch at the same time, and I made a character, and then I put it away. Um, but I a while ago I bought a Switch port. And it's a port from a PC game. It's called Into the Breach. It's by the same people that made FTL, or the same studio that made FTL, and um. And it's got like a uh, it's got like a rewind time mechanic, uh, a little bit. And the story's story's real simple. Um, yeah, the, the world's been destroyed, and you they send the they're called void walkers, I think is what they're called, and they 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 operate giant mechs. Um, and there's three different there's three different kinds of mechs, and eventually you unlock different um, class of mechs. Um, anyway, so they. Uh, uh, they send you back in time to fight the Vex, which are like these, um, which are like these different alien creatures, and you go from island to island and conquering different things. And it's, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, they call it something, but it's like a isometric um, strategy game, uh, turn based, and it's, uh, it's pretty fucking cool. Uh, I really like it, um, and it's replayable, and I highly recommend it. I think you could buy it for like ten or fifteen bucks on the Switch store. And if you're if you're like me and you don't really play a whole lot of video games, I know I sound misleading because I, I say I'm playing this game and that game. I really don't play a lot of video games. Um, and if you're like me and you like quick little burns like Rocket League, five minutes and you're done. Something like uh, Into the Breach might be for you. Uh, you can you can play a couple rounds and put it away and come back to it and do a little bit of strategizing and come back to it and it's replayable. It's cool. I like it. And that's what I got for you, man. I don't think I've I don't think I watched anything else here recently. All right. Well, I'm not going to argue with you there. <laughs> Henry and I watched something very recently. Ooh, we did. You watch? As in last night we watched Bohemian Rhapsody. Ooh, is this the real life? Or is this fantasy? Galileo. <laughs> Galileo. <laughs> Hiya. Galileo. No, I don't think I can go anywhere on that. It's gonna, it's gonna strain my that? voice a little too much. Mm. I, I, I uh, thought it was all right. I, ha- I have fun. I enjoyed it. It's not, yeah. the best movie. Um, but if, there's a lot of Queen music. Obviously, they just throw it in like literally every second that they can. But um, I like Queen. Do you want anything so. less than in, in a Queen movie? No, no. I think I no, think that's I, definitely the yeah. right way to do it. But yeah, it's. It, it to me, it was uh, it was an exercise of style over substance. And okay. To me, it almost felt like like a visual interpretation of a Wikipedia article about Queen. <laughs> like it didn't quite capture, I think, a real like real people. Like it just kind of felt like hollow characterizations of things that had happened in the past. But it's all. I mean, it's it's shot pretty well. Rami Malek is great as Freddie Mercury. Um, but I, I just kind of, I, I definitely wanted more out of it. Like I felt like there was a more, I don't know about, I don't know about concise, but it's just like, it, like it was just kind of all over the place in terms of time and things that it tried to cover. And I think there was a way to tell that story. That's just more compelling in a cinematic format. So I, 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 yeah, I mean, it's, it's, especially if you have any sort of reverence for Queen, I think it's, it's worth watching, even though it does kind of flub the actual, uh, factual details of things here and there, um, for for the sake of storytelling, I 
I think it's it's enjoyable overall. Oh, I just, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess if you want things that are um, musical and tell good character stories, then The Star is Born is 100% the, the way to go, but... You know, it's 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 got its own merits, definitely. So I won't I won't, I won't totally write it off. I, I I thought it was, you said it was it was enjoyable. Just just it uh, could have been more. I, I got gotcha. you. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Henry. Uh, you been up to anything else you want to talk about? Recommend anything like that? Uh, let's see. I watched a couple movies this weekend. Other than that one, I caught the um, Dragon Ball Z double feature. Playing some old movies. Which are always fun to see, especially on the big screen, is the Bardock movie and the uh, Fusion Reborn movie, which was I had not seen. It was ridiculous. Like, just Andrew, since you have a little bit of context, the um, yeah, Goten and uh, Trunks fight Hitler in this movie. So uh, go, uh, what? Hold on. What? <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> go go check that out sometime. <laughs> what's, what's the name of the movie? Uh, Fusion Reborn. Fusion Reborn, got it. It's, it's Done. a pretty ridiculous movie. Um, not not very good, if I would say so. But is this is this canon? Is this considered uh, I canon? Think, I think I think it's a lot sure of the movies not. are not adapted in the in the official <laughs> canon. Um, so yeah. Well, I mean, did they did they at least kill Hitler? Uh, Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah they, they would like stop him. People. Like they got to go in glorious bastards and just uh, like although, fucking uh, destroy history, right? <laughs> Although there was one pretty apt joke where where Hitler like they go Super Saiyan and you know you have like blonde gold hair and your eyes turn blue and Hitler's just like you have blonde hair and blue eyes and they're strong like I should be recruiting them. <laughs> so Jesus so, yeah. Christ, <laughs> what was the sub? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, I'm just straight face palming over here right uh, now. Yeah, it's what's it's, the uh, it's, what, what was the other movie Japan? called? What are you bloody doing? <laughs> uh, what's the what? What was the other movie called? Uh, I think it's just called Bardock. It's about Goku's dad. Okay, uh, that one's pretty cool. Not, Did he fight Hitler? No, he, uh-huh. fights, he fights Frieza. I'm fucking out. I, I don't care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, what else? Uh, I watched Rocky 2. I'm going to try to get through some more Rocky movies. Uh, and Ooh, that, that, that's a pretty good grind there. That's yeah. That actually well, doesn't I, sound like a bad idea. I borrowed them from Colton and, you know, you, you go see Rocky and then, you know, you got to go, if you're in Philly, jog up the steps. Yeah, that's one advantage of living here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck you guys. Um, I don't have any steps. I'm sure you can find something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, I, I need I need I need to finish Spider Man because I, I know you two have finished, but I have not. So I'm um, working my way through that, and um, also finished. I think I met, I told Cold and uh, was watching The Good Place, seasons one. Yeah, and two. yeah. Seasons one and two are on Netflix. Uh, I finished season two, so I need to get on season three, which is the latest season, and uh, that is a very good show. I would recommend that. The Good Place. The Good Place, yes. What's that all about? I never it's heard of that show. It's about when you die and you go to the good place. Oh, okay. And it's about what what that place would be like. It's what? Uh, it, it, Ted Ted Danson, Kristen Bell? Sorry. Yeah, they're both yeah. great in it. Um, it's a comedy, and they're, they're short, like 20-minute episodes on Netflix, so it's very easy to kind of just binge through it. Uh, very enjoyable, very fun show. You know, that's one thing I don't watch a lot of. I don't watch a lot of comedy. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's it, it's not like the... the It doesn't have the same formula as the um, like the sitcoms that I think of, like The Offices and the Parks and Rec, although I, I enjoy those a whole lot. This, this does feel very different from that kind of show. Right. But um, yeah, go uh, check it out sometime. I think I will. Colton, what have you been up to? Did you talk about what you've been up to? Uh just briefly. Um I not not a whole lot outside of Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh played the Spider Man DLC, uh, which is like Black Cat focused. I, I really enjoy Black Cat as a character. I enjoyed the DLC. It's more of the same from the game. 
Um, so either of you guys get a chance to play it. It's definitely worthwhile. Although they're doing it in like three parts, so maybe you guys want to wait until all three parts are out. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I was in the mood, so I, I ran through it pretty quickly. Um, other than that, uh, really the only thing that I wanted to shout out right now, um, it's sort of a meld of video games and watching things. I watched a... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm currently still watching it. It's a playthrough... Uh, by Giant Bomb. I know, Andrew, you're a fan of Giant Fuck Bomb. Fuck yeah, dude. What, what are you doing? Uh, they did a playthrough of a game called The Quiet Man. Uh, this is published by Square Enix, and it is one of the jankiest, like, best, worst games I've seen in a good while. It's like this weird blend of full motion videos, like actual like live action videos spliced with gameplay <laughs> and How old combat. Is it? it just came out like Holy less shit. than a week ago. Like and it's just this fucking absolutely bizarre thing that that is released. Like it's described as like this three hour kind of like cinematic adventure or whatever. Yeah, and so bullshit. the whole premise is the main character is the your main character is deaf but i'm not exactly sure what exactly the story is because the developers made the conscious decision to basically take away all of the audio from the game so there's <laughs> what there's extended scenes where like people have conversations but you can't hear anything that's going on and there's no subtitles given so it's just like 5 minutes of just people like mouthing things to each other and like you're just watching it like i don't understand any of this and then it just like segs into like this random sequence of like this dude like beating the shit out of like these like super racist gang gang members like they, they this racist depiction of like gang members like fighting him like I'm like I didn't see it pop up on the thing when did what you, are, the fuck is this game It's on Steam I think it's on PS4 No I mean it did was actually, the um did they or did they did they play oh, with the extra was, life thing Yeah it was an extra life I got so, you So okay. yeah I think it starts at like the 2 hour 45 minute mark I can link you up if if you if you want to watch it but oh my god I'm about an hour into it and I think it's like like I said it's like a 3 hour game and holy fuck it's incredible is um, um it's, it's it's made enjoy more enjoyable by listening to their commentary on yeah, it. Yeah, they're pretty great. I, I'm I'm not familiar with the personalities on Giant Bomb other than other than Jeff, who is not on this. Jeff Gertzman. Um, yeah. So, uh, but they're all great. Um, like just who's like on the, reacting do you know who, to this. Do you, know who, do you know who's on this? No, one? I guess I don't. I don't. I don't know anyone by name. I don't really watch Giant Bomb all that often, so I don't know any of the the guys' names. But it's there's. For most of it, it's three guys and a girl, and then she just uh, subbed out for 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 a guy that came in for her. So I don't know if she's coming back or not, but it's it's fucking amazing. Um, I wouldn't recommend anyone buy the game. I think it's like fifteen bucks on Steam or whatever. But like, just go on YouTube and like look this video up of the. Uh, you could probably I would say anyone doing a stream of this and like with commentary added is like probably fucking gold but this is this is awesome because it's multiple people doing it and like so you just have the banter going on of like them just being totally fucking bewildered by what's happening in front of them and like this is a game published by a major publisher like like what the fuck is this like it's awesome I feel like uh, if you're going to watch any sort of streaming if you want something that's got a little bit more of a production value and you went like educated video game journalists talking about the game and providing commentary that happened to be really um they're they're uh, charismatic character the charismatic people they're really enjoyable to listen to I, I like I like watching all their shit uh, Giant Bomb is the place to to uh, to watch video con video game content in my personal opinion I think it's probably the yeah best place I, to I watch guess it. I'm just not I'm not I don't really listen to a whole lot of video con. Uh, <laughs> video goms i was gonna say video gum <laughs> no, that's not actually german they have a really good podcast um, um they have several really yeah. good podcasts they're, they're, they're I, good. I do listen to a video game podcast filthy casuals um where some there was one episode where they said guten morgen video gum which is again still not <laughs> correct german but um yeah like i i i, I don't really I don't really consume a whole lot of video game material like this. Like, I get on, I like, you know, Twitch TV and all that. Like, there's like a big market for like playing video games and stuff like that. And I've never got into that. But this is the type of game for me where I'm like, I'm not going to buy this fucking game. Like, I'm not going to play this fucking game. Like, I would just be bored and like sad playing this game. But like, 
watching people play this game, like just fucking musing about like what the fuck is happening. Like this is this is a good way to experience this type of content. I feel. Uh, on a side note, uh, Alex Navarro of the Giant Bomb, I think, raised over a hundred thousand dollars on uh, playing Rock Band for like fucking sixteen hours or something ridiculous. Oh. He played drums maybe for I like should, uh, maybe hours. I should sign up for a job with uh, Giant say, Bomb that. because. Uh, Oh, that sounds pretty good to me. Well, he raised a, it for it was an extra life thing. Um, but oh, he played. Okay. He yeah. played. He <laughs> he raised over a hundred grand for extra life, and um, guy, he played. He played a ridiculous amount of drums. Played so many songs. Oh man, we'd have so many beers if we tried to do that. So yes. many beers. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it sober too. I think he was drinking like water and shit. I don't know. But oh, anyways, I don't know if I could do that. But... Yeah, he's a machine. I don't know how he. He has a really nice fucking drum set too. Really nice rock band drum set. I wonder if he has the Ion kit. That that was that was always yeah. a dream of mine. I don't know. I don't know. He's got... Anyways, we're now we're now we're rambling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely uh, <laughs> rambling over here. Let's go ahead and uh, call it uh, for this episode here. Thank you all for listening to us talk about uh, Daredevil season three. Uh, we had fun talking about uh, Marvel and Netflix uh, over these past couple episodes. Uh, Luke Cage and Iron Fist on the last episode. We did talk about uh, Jessica Jones season two as well earlier this year. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the the other Netflix shows that we have coming uh, next year. We we definitely will have Punisher season two and Jessica Jones season three. And, you know, knock on wood, we might have Daredevil season four either next year or 2020. We'll see. We will see. Um, if you guys enjoyed what you heard, please spread the word. Uh, you can also support us on Patreon. Uh wanted to shout out the Halloween bonus episode that we did. Uh, talked about Spiria, Audition, The Wailing, It Comes at Night, four movies, four horror movies, four different countries that they came from. Um, it's an interesting kind of way to look at horror uh, in general, and if you know you're not quite ready to, to move past Halloween, it's a good time to go in on that sort of thing. So uh, again, website is watchreviewrepeat.com. Very easy to remember. Premium tab, become a patron button. Click some buttons after that. You're done. That's it. That's it. It's two dollars a month. Get bonus episodes on a monthly basis. You get early access to our regular episodes. Anytime they come out, it's, a good it's deal. awesome. It's pretty awesome. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please send those our way at watchreviewrepeat at gmail.com. It's been a hot minute since we've received anything through there, so uh, do it, you know? <laughs> so It'd be it. nice to see a little bit of a uh, fan interaction, uh, assuming that there are fans uh, listening and interacting. That would be interesting. <laughs> um, you can also interact with us on our socials at WRRPod. And uh, Facebook, watch, review, repeat, intro, outro track, Kinolith by Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. And we would like to say thank you to Henry for joining us on this episode. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Kevin Feige, you know, told me to come by, so, you know, of course I come. Marvel yeah, to spread good. the good word about Marvel yeah. and you know, all the good work that they're doing for us. Yeah, yeah, fair. Absolutely fair. Um, yeah, uh, Andrew and I haven't quite made a decision on our next episode, but I can speculate that between Suspiria, the new one coming out, and Overlord coming out, I think we might uh, have a double weekend, episode. Yeah, that that we will have a double feature in store for our listeners. I think that's probably going to be the way to go. We we'll just continue that um, horror train. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm definitely fine with that. I am in the mood to see both of those movies. I'm very excited about both. Uh, so I'm looking forward to talking about both of them. So, um, There's until a new then. Episode. <laughs> until then. Laters on the Minjay. Laters on the Minjay. <laughs>